Welcome to Questions and Answers from Quarantine with Pastor Chris McMichael. Hello there. Welcome to Questions and Answers from Quarantine, episode 37. I'm Chris McMichael. We welcome you to this uh, podcast and video series, I suppose. We are going through um, lots of questions and answers as we are, as a nation, experiencing a a nationwide quarantine, shutdown, lockup, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to move on with question 37. And this one came from a, a mother. She says, or she asks, I've been looking into biblical ways in discipling my child, or excuse me, dis- disciplining my child. My questions are, does, quote, spare the rod, spoil the child, unquote, interpret into spanking, or are we taking the, quote, rod to physically? Also, what are appropriate ways to discipline if I am not interpreting this correctly? All right, excellent question. And I see that she's got in italics, spare the rod, spoil the child. Ironically enough, uh, that, that phrase, spare the rod, if you spare the rod, or that is to say, if you don't discipline them, you spoil them. Spare the rod, spoil the child is not actually in the Bible. It's a misquote of what's in the Bible. The quote is from Proverbs chapter 13. It says, Proverbs 13, 24, he that spares his rod hates his son. That's a big difference between spare the rod, spoil the child. It says, he that spares his rod hates his son. Years ago, 15, 17 years ago, I was driving from one part of the country to another part of the country for business and I was driving overnight and I was listening to a talk radio in the middle of nowhere and they actually had a radio program and they were just talking into their microphone and they said, let's do famous misquotes. And so they said, if you've got a famous misquote and the accurate quote, call in now. And I was driving and I thought, hey, why not? So they gave the number. So I had my cell phone and I called in and I got on the air and they said, yeah, Chris is on the line. What do you got for us, Chris? And I said, well, the famous quote is spare the rod, spoil the child. And I said, and that's not the right quote. They said, it's not. I said, no, no, it's from the Bible. It's from the book of Proverbs. It says, spare the rod. You hate your child. And you could tell they weren't prepared to hear that. And so they kind of started bantering. And I was going to go interject some more because they had just asked a biblical question. And then my call was ended. Not out of rudeness, but because they had a little program to continue. So Proverbs says here, He that spares his rod hates his son, but he that loves his son chasteneth him betimes. That's King James. Let me give it to you in the NAS. It says, He who withholds his rod, and let's see, uh, Or it says, uh, i.e. correction or discipline. He who withholds the rod of correction hates his son or daughter. But he who loves him disciplines him diligently. And a footnote on that says, he that loves him seeks him diligently with discipline. And so I understand the the question is, is it really, are we really supposed to spank our children? Is that bad? Is that wrong? Well, there are actually six more Proverbs that talk about spanking, what we call spanking. Here, we, the Proverbs calls it the rod of correction. The New Testament in Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 12 calls it chastisement or scourging. The question is, does the Bible teach physical discipline? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, the Bible teaches physical discipline. But we've got to qualify that because we have a lot of child abuse issues today. We have a lot of physical, domestic issues today. And so there's a lot of stuff that that graduates very rapidly beyond biblical discipline all the way up to just out, out and out child abuse. One of the things we've got to understand is the heart behind all discipline. The heart behind discipline is, number one, it begins with mom and dad's heart. And the heart behind discipline is we want to correct and disciple our children into the ways and the fear of God, into his doctrine, into right and wrong, morality. And we want to make sure that when we discipline, uh, whether it's a little pop on the wrist or a little swat on the back of the leg, or if you have to graduate to a paddle, like a spoon, um, or they even manufacture paddles anymore. I, I know this discussion, I was borderlining into heresy and progressive anathema, the de- generation we're living in now. I, I want you to be assured, spanking your child biblically will not give them the stutters. That comes from a different source, and it isn't obeying the Bible and correcting a child. 
But the heart behind it is that you as a parent are in control of your emotions. You don't spank angry. You don't discipline angry. Uh, even if you don't do physical or corporal punishment with your child, you can put them in time out in an attitude that's much more physically or uh, emotionally abusive than a caring parent might swat their little child on the hand for throwing something or swat them on the bum for, for being naughty. It's all about the attitude here. And when the attitude is to correct and to restore, then we can do this thing safely. Uh, obviously, beating kids with rods and beating kids with, with sticks and, and flinging leather belts gets, gets into child abuse. But we've got to understand the purpose behind it is to discipline, disciple, and correct our child. The other thing is we don't discipline actions. We discipline attitudes. A lot of parents, they lose control. They get angry because the child doesn't do what they want, but the child wasn't being rebellious. The attitude or the purpose behind discipline is to correct attitude. Most of the time, the outward action is not the problem. It's the attitude behind it. If a child knocks over a, a vase or a vase, depending on where you're from, if knocks over a vase and it breaks, you don't spank or discipline or put in time out just because the vase got knocked over. But what was the attitude behind it? Was is it an accident? Would, did they back into it trying to help somebody and it gets knocked over? Or were they bouncing a ball that you told them five times, stop bouncing the ball and they did it anyway? That's going to, the, the motive behind the behavior is what we're trying to discipline. Lots of things are accidents. And when they're accidents, we just, we just fix it. But when things are done in rebellion, that's what we've got to correct. Let's look at some of these other Proverbs. Look at Proverbs 19 verse 18. If you keep in mind that what we're correcting is attitude and not behavior, you may actually find yourself having to do a lot more correcting, a lot more discipline. If maybe you were raised to have uh, actions corrected and not attitude, you may be always chasing actions. But if you can curb the attitude, the actions dry up. Proverbs 19 verse 18, it says, Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. So it lets us know that Biblical chastisement, biblical correction will bring tears on occasion. And that doesn't mean we have to lift a paddle at all or a switch. I was raised in the South. We had switches sometimes. But you, you know how it is. If you've got more than two or three kids, one of them, all you have to do is say, do not do that again, and they'll start crying. But the Bible tells us if you're right and biblical in your correction, then you don't stop the correction just because they're crying. That kind of crying, that kind of godly sorrow can work a repentance. We're not trying to hurt children. We're not even trying to emotionally hurt children. We're trying to train them behaviorally. We're trying to shape their soul. We're trying to shape their attitude. Every, even the pagan progressives understand some behavior is just totally unacceptable. And I, even as I record this, I feel the caution because I know this is going on the internet and I know there's going to be people who listen to this that just want to jump on this and call us child abusers. Listen, I have pastored for a long time now and I have seen parents discipline properly and I have seen parents neglect discipline and I can tell you parents who discipline properly have children that aren't going to jail and they have children that aren't going to be little hellions by the time they're 10, 11, and 12. And they, they behave now. They're not weird now. They're not insecure now. They're not fearful now. I have seen discipline done so that when you set, tell your child, go stand by the paddle, the kids go stand by the paddle. They're not afraid of the paddle. They're not afraid of the spanking. They get their lickings. They cry. They say, sorry, mommy. They repent to everybody and they go back to having fun. <laughs> I don't have time to get into all the psychology behind it, the false psychology, the good psychology. Our heart behind it is we want to teach children right from wrong. And I'll give you an African proverb. The whole of the African continent corporately disciplines their children. That means they, they spank them. They said it is amazing. The rod of correction applied to the seat of understanding brings wisdom to the heart. <laughs> the rod of correction applied to the seat of understanding uh, brings wisdom to the heart. It's interesting. If we spank on the bottom, the bottom your bum, two big muscles called the gluteus maximus, covered by a subcutaneous layer of fat. No vital organs anywhere, and yet sensitive skin. <laughs> it's like God knew what he was talking about when we spank on the bottom with a swat with a paddle or your hand. 
It'll bring correction real quick. And sadly enough, this is becoming illegal in certain states, and it's illegal in a lot of Western countries, especially like Canada and Europe. And if you spank your child there, they'll take you to jail for child abuse. But then the child can become a rapist at 12 and 13, and that's okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's read some other verses. Proverbs 22:15 says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. That means the Bible says your child is a fool, rebellious, reckless. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So you, that means you've got to always be correcting foolishness. When that little swat on the bottom comes, they feel that sting. They know, okay, they start, it's called uh, cognitive therapy. <laughs> they start conditioning their soul to say, all right, I don't need to be cussing. I don't need to be pushing my sibling. I don't need to be sneaking behind daddy's back. I don't need to be yelling. You can pop a child on the bottom and it's going to be okay. I'm not talking about child abuse. I'm talking about the rod of correction. There's a huge difference. There's no gray line there. Child abuse is flat out child abuse. But the rod of correction and discipline, man, there, I, I'm, we still have schools in this country that still spank children with the paddle. If you were to study it, uh, the history of it, as we began to uh, look in, with disdain upon corporal punishment in schools, you'll see rebellion and um, parochial school and childhood crime go through the roof. We've stopped spanking, we've stopped disciplining, disciplining, and we've started allowing children to rule the roost, and it's caused all hell to break out in every direction, every school district, every system. Every school teacher will tell you the only problem with teaching is the kids. And the problem with the kids is their parents. And the children no longer fear authority. And that's really unfortunate. So Proverbs 22:15 says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Proverbs 23, 13 says, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Now that's hard harsh King James, but if you will spank him with the rod or paddle or switch or whatever you need, withhold not correction from the child. So notice it says what one of the critical types of correction is that rod. It says if you will spank him with the rod, he shall not die. There's some kind of preserving power in discipline. Having a disciplined person is wonderful. America is not disciplined. That's why we have such a high morbidity rate. Uh, the more undisciplined society is, the more reckless and destructive they become. Number, verse 14 says, Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. I wonder, I wonder what the percentage of folks in hell are that got spanked versus those that are in heaven got spanked. There's something about curbing rebellion in the heart of a child that comes with discipline. And the key is, again, I can't overemphasize it. You got to be disciplined in your soul. You don't spank angry. You don't correct angry. And even if you're allergic to spanking, you don't yell at your kids to go to their room or go to time out because that is worse than spanking with emotional coolness. If you can say, all right, sweetie, I told you twice not to do that. Go stand by the paddle. And you can do that with coolness and say, all right, I'm going to spank you because the Bible teaches me to do so. But I'm spanking you because I told you not to hit your sister twice. You did. And... That just deserves a spanking. You can spank them, pray with them, teach them how to repent, go back to having fun, and they'll learn not to do certain things. Or you can lose your cool, think you're, doing, you're being the super parent by never spanking because, you know, spanking produces speech impediments. And yet scream and yell at your kid like a banshee because you have no self-control issues yourself. You're not doing anything any better. And yet we know, we all agree, children have to be disciplined. Children have to be taught. They have to be pruned. They have to be weeded. And it isn't just through all positive affirmation, though I'm a big fan of positive affirmation. Negative behavior has to be rewarded too. And I hate to even have to debate this, but I can feel like I already am. Verse 14 says, You shall beat him with the rod, or spank him, discipline him with a paddle, and you will save their soul from hell. <laughs> And 29.15, Proverbs 29.15. Seven Proverbs that teach us to spank. 
The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself, that is, you don't ever spank your child. You say, no, no, stop, Johnny. Little Johnny, you stop that. You stop that right now. One, two, three. Counting is the worst way to parent. Pastor Vaughn used to say, by the time you get to one, you're already a liar. And really parents count because they're too lazy to get up and curb their child's behavior. So I, I teach against counting. My children don't, they don't, they've never heard me count. We do have a rule in our house. When we give a command, when we give an order, when we tell them to do something, they know it. They can all quote it to you. Even my two-year-old. No challenge, no excuse, no delay. We don't count. Count means I'm too lazy to actually be a parent. This verse says, the rod of reproof will bring wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. What that means is eventually that child's going to become a 15-year-old, an 18-year-old, and their behavior is going to be unruly, and you're going to be embarrassed of, their kid, of your kid, and they're going to go on to do things that shame you the rest of their life. Parenting takes a heavy, heavy toll on you in the early stages, but if you'll make that investment... As the kid grows, you won't have to put as much energy into that kind of discipline and that kind of parenting. If you can, it, it, I, I always use the African example, and you'll have to forgive me because I go to Africa a lot. I was in South Africa one time on a game preserve, and they asked us if we wanted to see elephants, and I said, sure, let's see elephants. And so they radioed, and uh, this, they, they brought to us up the mountainside three elephants, and uh, then I could see this little Zulu man. He was the elephant caregiver. And so as he's coming up the mountain, uh, the elephants, they're, they're big. They were all female. They were two mothers and a, and a child elephant. But the child elephant was still seven, eight feet tall. Anytime they'd kind of get out of the line he was leading, he would put a shoulder really hard into even that big mama elephant. And that mama elephant would straighten up. So that this little Zulu man... He was the wrangler. He was an elephant wrangler. And all he had was like a little walking stick and rubber boots. And so he brought them all the way up just so we could play with elephants. I, I'm privileged to have been able to play with elephants eye to eye with them. And, and I've got pictures of holding them and playing with their trunk. And it was a really cool experience. But I got to talking to the Zulu guy. And I said, sir, if I can ask, um, aren't you scared of these uh, elephants? He said, no. I said, well, you do realize they could take you by their trunks and pull you apart. He said, they would never do that to me. And I said, why is that? He said, because I have raised them all since they were little. And in their eyes, I'm still bigger than them. And I thought, what a proverb for parenting. If you will discipline your child, if you will be the corrective force, and I can tell you, all children need discipline. They need bumpers. They need guardrails. They need a trellis for their soul. They need to be pruned. They need to be sheared. They'll always look to you, which is what you want. If you don't parent properly, by the time they're 10, 11, 12, they're already going to their friends and they trust their friends more than they do mom and dad. And that will spell shame and frustration for the rest of your life. One more verse, 29, 17. Correct your son and he shall give thee rest. That's exactly what I just said. If you'll discipline your son, starting or daughter, beginning when they're little, they will always provide rest for your soul. I parent folks, uh, excuse me, I pastor people who were not good parents. They loved their kids, but they didn't know how to love their kids. And so as the kids grew wild, well, a five-year-old is wild, uh, has a, a wildness that if isn't tamed, becomes a much more lethal wildness in a 25-year-old. And I've watched and helped and counseled a lot of parents through a lot of hurt, a lot of shame, a lot of anguish over adult children. They were just too lazy to properly parent when they were one and two and five and ten. Parenting is a busy, busy endeavor. And you're always correcting and always curbing. You don't laugh at sin in their life. You don't laugh when they do dumb, rebellious stuff. You stay on them and say, son, we don't do that. You do it again, I'm going to swatch you. And this isn't child abuse. This is raising viable human beings for society. The government and the correction facility will thank you later. <laughs> the raw, excuse me, verse 17. Correct your son and he shall give thee rest. Yes, he shall give delight unto your soul. I have parents whose kids have gone to jail. I have parents whose kids have gotten pregnant out of wedlock. I've got parents whose kids have done drugs and done every kind of drug. And the anguish in their soul, the pain in their eyes, and they just shake their head. 
It's all back, comes back to proper parenting, correcting, prayer, Bible study, spanking. If you do it proper, they'll love you the more. I'm not talking about child abuse. Uh, I'm not talking about leaving marks. I'm just, the rod of correction applied to the seed of understanding in a controlled, loving, understandable matter will enforce discipline and right from wrong. And if you want to debate, that's fine. Parenting is an 18-year marathon. We'll see how you do if you think I'm wrong. I hope that helps you. That'll probably be one of the more controversial ones because our nation is allergic to discipline and correction. But there it is from the Bible. Seven Proverbs on spanking. You have to do it in a regulated, calm, God-filled, loving way. We'll see you in the next episode. Be praying for our nation. We need this thing to turn around. See you next time.